one of the big problems that San Francisco has, and our neighborhood's no different, is the flight of professional families from our neighborhoods once their children are eligible to go to school because they're not satisfied with the quality of our schools. And as a result, our schools are de facto segregated with mostly minorities and the young white families have simply left our city. That's not healthy for any neighborhood. It's not healthy for any city. One day I was walking with Molly Brown and found Jennifer, who lives right over there in the gray house. He was asking a lot about what it would take young families to stay in the city and why there are so many of us young families leaving. And I had been chatting a lot about this very issue with many of our other um, friends that had young children, and we all agreed that we needed access to public schools. I said, well, if you want to work together and help organize and put together a group that will make a difference with our local schools which have not enjoyed the highest reputation even though they're literally right around the corner I think we can make a difference and so uh, with Jennifer and Dina's leadership we started uh, putting together an organization which has now grown to be a very strong and effective organization in trying to make a difference with our neighborhood schools This group grew organically. It started with Jennifer and I, who have been girlfriends since we both moved into the neighborhood before we had kids. And one by one, people started showing up. They heard about what we were doing. Um, Deborah, our lawyer, Stacy, our market researcher, Laura, our grant expert, Melissa, our political junkie, Catherine, our community know it all, and Mike, our web genius. And everyone is incredibly committed. When we found out that Daniel Webster was going to be on the closure list from San Francisco Unified School District, we rallied our incredible uh, parent community in Potrero Hill to save the school from closure. We got incredible media support in print and radio and television and had really tremendous support from our local merchants as well as our politicians. In the end, the vote that we got from the, the Board of Education was pretty overwhelming. They, they all voted in favor of saving Daniel Webster. So once we got that uh, good news, the real work began. And because Daniel Webster does have low enrollment, we uh, unveiled a two-part plan to the Board of Ed and the district. The first part of our plan, which we're uh, working on immediately, is to open a preschool on the campus of Daniel Webster. So that we can get families comfortable with being on campus and getting to know the educators and the faculty and the student body and the other families. So that it becomes really a natural feeder to that elementary school. We are working together, Mission Neighborhood Center uh, is working together with uh, the uh, parents of uh, Petrero Hill to introduce a pre preschool um, at the Daniel Webster Elementary School facility. And it will be a model preschool uh, as far as we're concerned. It will be a Spanish immersion uh, preschool that will provide services not just to the residents of Petrero Hill, but will include children of other communities who are low income. Mission Neighborhood Center is important because they have expertise in developing child development programs. They also care about providing services for the southeast sector of San Francisco and they want to work with us to provide access for middle class families to have preschool in their neighborhood so they're a perfect partner for us. The preschool itself will be a good, high-quality program, and we're looking at having a dual immersion um, type of model where uh, children can learn Spanish and English at the same time, and children will become fully bilingual by the, by the end of their experience. Bilingual education is important to me because of all of the recent studies that have been put out that um, it increases a child's capacity to learn mathematics, science, it sort of does something to their, to their brain, rewires it in a way that helps them to learn uh, faster, quicker, and more creatively. So it's something that we just want to uh, make sure that our daughter has the opportunity to, to have. But today, in, especially in San Francisco, if you don't have a second language, I, I just don't think you can operate in the world only speaking English. Ora en español. 
una tu, una tu, nadando en el agua, una tu, una tu. Oh no, fue comido. The second sort of long-term part of our plan is to bring a magnet program, such as a, a language immersion program, to the school. So adding a magnet program is a necessary next step to recruiting and retaining middle-class families that would otherwise leave the San Francisco public school system altogether or the city itself. The most successful school that I have seen in the district are the ones that have a strong partnership with the parents and the parents are there supporting the education for the children and also there is a strong uh, academic program that are happening in the classrooms. Well it's critical that we now move to the next step. We've organized, we've convinced the school board that we can do the job, we're moving to do the job and now we need to raise the money that will improve the physical plant that is necessary for the kind of preschool that will make a difference as well as the school itself and we're looking for help from every area that we can in order to accomplish this. In order to raise the money that we need we established the Petrero Residence Education Fund at the San Francisco Foundation. The Petrero Residence Education Fund is a way for people to make tax deductible donations to support educational initiatives on Petrero Hill. We're looking to our neighborhood to support us and also to uh, major foundations that are in the San Francisco area to help support the school as well. The money that we raise will be used to supplement the local school budgets to provide additional programming that is not currently adequately funded by the state. For example, tutoring programs, sports programs, art, music, things that are not currently available to the children in these schools. So what we need is to expand our tutorial programs going from second to fourth grade and year round. If we would like to provide the best education that we can, we also need to think about the art programs. I believe that there are so many young children on this side of the city that to close elementary schools in the southeastern section of San Francisco is poor planning. There's going to be so much need and elementary schools in particular, parents really want proximity. I do. I would like to walk my child to school. We're surrounded by children and the thought of not sending our kids to this school um, is heartbreaking. What makes this movement between Potrero Hill parents and Mission Neighborhood Centers important and significant is that we're not just looking at, at a school remaining open or introducing a preschool, but rather changing the school so that it, it transcends beyond its current state and provides quality education to all. We can have great public schools on Potrero Hill, but the community needs to come together. We need community members to volunteer in the local schools. We need local residents, merchants, corporations, foundations to put their money behind this project and help us build a fund that will supplement the budget of our local schools so that we can have the high quality programming that will draw families back into the public schools. We all believe in the public schools because we believe that this is really the foundation of our democracy. Public schools that reflect the diversity of our neighborhood, our community, and our city and we believe that within a few years we're going to be able to do that if we get the kind of help we're looking for.